Garbage truck drivers have been waiting for up to six hours to unload rubbish at waste transfer stations this week, as Hong Kong's massive cleanup rolled on five days after monster storm typhoon man could tore into the city. Waste Disposal Industry Association Chairman Tam Kai Wa said the waiting time for some drivers on Monday, the day after Man Kit struck, was between four and six hours. The most intense storm to hit the city since records began in 1946 destroyed windows and pavements, left close to 15,000 collapsed or damaged trees in its wake and flung heaps of debris across many parts of the city. Sea-facing and low-lying areas were the worst affected, but an office tower in Hung Home also had at least 100 window panels blown out, and its interior units were seriously damaged. On a radio program on Friday, Tam said the longest waiting time on Thursday according to official information was two hours. However, he added, he had heard about some drivers waiting for as long as three hours. The official information only counted time waiting inside those stations, without including time waiting outside on the road, he said. Under normal circumstances, Tam added, drivers waited for at most 15 minutes to unload trash at the city's seven refuse transfer stations. Garbage from waste collection points across the city is sent to the stations, where it is compacted, packed into containers and then sent to landfills. Betty Chung Mu Han, assistant director of the Environmental Protection Department, estimated the city had seen about 30 to 40 percent more waste after the typhoon. Sewage leaks into Hong Kong's back garden after typhoons speaking during the same program as Tam Chung said the daily amount of waste handled by the city's transfer stations was 12,300 tons on Tuesday, a surge from the daily average of 8,500 tons as recorded last year. 50% more time is needed to handle wood waste compared with general waste Betty Chung, Environmental Protection Department. Within a short period of time, many trees fell after the typhoon. As well as many shattered items, Chung said. Wood and branches could pose challenges for compactor operations at the stations, she added. 50% more time is needed to handle such wood waste compared with general waste, she said. The branches and wood could also damage the compactors. The typhoon had also inflicted different levels of damage to facilities within the stations, she continued, causing road blockages in some cases. Operations were not as smooth as usual. Meet the increasing demand for its services, the department lengthened operating times at six of the seven stations as well as at landfills in the west and northeast of the new territories. Tam suggested the government in future place fallen wood and trees at a specific location for recyclers to handle and thereby reduce the workload for the refuse transfer stations. Mankit ripped through Hong Kong with wind speeds of up to 195 km per hour and came within 100 km of the city at its closest, resulting in the observatory keeping its highest warning signal, number 10, in place for 10 hours. Experts estimated developers and homeowners would need to fork out millions to fix buildings mauled by the storm, with one assessor placing the price tag at more than $1 billion.